наприкінці серпня. Доброго дня, шановні колеги, всіх вітаю наприкінці серпня. Бажаю всім вдалого переходу з, з літа на осінь, вдалого початку нового навчального року. Щиро дякую всім за довіру, що ви обрали Центр України Європейського наукового співробітництва. Та сьогодні приймайте участь в наукових стажуваннях, які проводяться на базі університету ІСМА, Латвійська Республіка, міста Рига. По-перше, ми хочемо подякувати е, усій Латвійській Республіці, е, наш, наші дружні партнери, е, отримуємо постійну підтримку протягом всієї війни і щиро дячні, що завдяки вам ми стоїмо, функціонуємо і потрохи-потрохи валимо ворога. Переходимо вже безпосередньо до робочої частини, і я з задоволенням надаю слово сьогоднішньому лектору Діані Зміцеревській, магістру економіки, доценту Вищої школи менеджменту інформаційних систем університету ІСМУ, ІСМУ керівнику проєктного відділу. Сьогодні вона буде з вами працювати на, по темі «Нові можливості в рамках академічної мобільності та інтернізація наукових досліджень». Діана, пліз спік. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see all of you joining this training. And uh, today uh, I will tell you about new possibilities in mobilities between our countries, between our establishments and institutions, and also about the things that we can do both, or you can do in the nearest period of 2027, and what uh, aims and objectives uh, are set for the development of academic stuff. Uh, so um, I will switch off the camera if uh, it's more convenient for you not to be distracted. I will share my screen, my presentation, and I will start sharing uh, my information with you. So, um, Let me. So, do you see? Do you see my uh, my screen? Yeah, yeah, perfectly. Okay. So, um, once again, I would like to um, just a second um, to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Diana Znicherevska. As uh, your colleague told, that uh, I am uh, assistant professor of economic department of uh, Usma University. This is a private university in Latvia, Riga. And I'm also heading project department. And generally, I will be speaking from the point of view of my experience and possibilities that we are developing at the moment that you all also have. Maybe some information is already familiar to you. Maybe you have participated in some projects or you are interested in them. Uh, so I hope that this information would be valuable for you and you can use it for your own development. If you will have questions, you can write them in the chat. I will read them and I can answer them as soon as uh, I see them, or we can leave uh, the answer, uh, questions and answer sessions for the end. I will try to use uh, one hour, one hour, 20 minutes the most, and I hope that you will find it useful. So um, to start uh, with the uh, introduction of um, our university, some few words about ISMA, so that you have understanding of what we are doing. ISMA is actually not only the private university, but this is a holding. It was founded in 1994. Uh, now we develop uh, as a university, as a school, as a publishing house, because uh, having everything in one place gives us more opportunities and more, let's say, competitive advantages between uh, public schools and private schools in, in Latvia. Uh, we speak and we teach now in Latvian and English. Russian is the language that we still speak, but we do not use it in the educational process because starting from uh, 1st January 2019, um, our educational ministry uh, has issued the legislation, the law that forbids uh, higher educational establishments to teach in Russian. So from that moment, we teach only in Latvian and English. Uh, the holding includes the university itself, the University of Applied Science. Uh, we have established also the branch in Fergana in Uzbekistan. It works from 2018. 
and it is quite successful. And we were the first uh, university, Latvian university, to establish a branch somewhere uh, in other countries. And uh, we can say that uh, it attracts more and more students. And uh, actually, uh, we are happy with the fact that we were the first to, to, to enter that market. We have a private school that teaches children from uh, six uh, years of age, so it's from first till 12th uh, grade. We have Scientific Research Institute that was established in 2016, and having a research institute as, um, is a mandatory uh, condition to become a university or to obtain the status of university. We have also Ismail Publishing. We publish uh, different journals, uh, different magazines, and also monographs. And uh, there are plenty of opportunities that we can have monograms, uh, monographs together with uh, some scholars, professors from other countries. We also have established uh, Ismail International School. Uh, this is IB School, International Baccalaureate School, that is working in more than 150 countries. And this school is accredited and works since 2020. So we are developing, we are expanding. What we offer, we uh, have all levels of education, starting from the first level of higher education, it is called college in our country, bachelor studies, master studies, and doctoral school. Why doctoral school? Uh, at the moment, we are in the process of re-accreditation of doctoral program. That is why we offer studies as doctoral school, but at the moment, our students, uh, we do not have the counsel. So our students defend the doctoral thesis in our partners' universities, in Ukraine, in Bulgaria, in other countries. Uh, basic study directions are management, economics, information systems, tourism, and restaurant business. And the uh, Master of Business Administration or Bachelor of Business Administration covers all of these study uh, directions. Uh, the accredited programs at the moment are business administration, business administration and tourism, information system and restaurant business. For students, we offer not only the studies according to accredited programs, but also scholarships. Students who have very good marks when they finish school, they uh, can obtain a scholarship for studying in our university. We offer different hostels. Uh, they, they are not our own, but we have uh, cooperation agreements with uh, different hostels in Riga. We offer also international internship. Uh, this is on the basis of Erasmus Plus programs, and this is just based on the partnership that we have established with our partners in many, many countries. Student mobility, basically these are Erasmus Plus programs, and this is not only for students, this is also for the staff, academic and non-academic. We can offer also tourism uh, services because we provide visa support for foreign students, obtaining ID cards, permanent residence uh, allowances. And in this connection, we are able to offer of, uh, making visas for, for tourism um, for students and also the staff members. And sometimes we offer employment. Some students also work in our university, they uh, after studies or during the studies, and this is a very good opportunity. Different forms of studies, this is full-time, this is part-time, the also distance learning is something that is preferred by students who want to obtain European diploma, but they don't want to physically move and study here. Um, main events that we hold every year, these are international conferences, these are periodical scientific publications and also different activities like sports and leisure that are also organized with the help of our students. We offer also courses or trainings like language courses, programming courses, design and models. This is for students who study in tourism. This is the system that is used in many touristic companies, um, in hotels. Um, um, the, the companies that sell tickets, air tickets, etc. And we also have trainings for personnel of different uh, educational establishments, not obligatory higher educational establishments, because at the moment, for example, we have a project running that is about methodo uh, methodology and how to teach gifted children. So in this case, we share our experience with uh, teachers who work in schools. 
the conferences that are open to every participant. And uh, if you are interested, you can also apply, you can also participate, you can also write an article, or you can make a presentation during the conferences. This is the annual international conference internship and employment usually takes place in November. And uh, the generally, uh, generally it is devoted to issues related to internship of students and employment possibilities. And in this case, we um, can um, use our partnerships. We can invite our partners to participate, representatives of different companies who can offer internship places and also employment for our students. International Conference Open Learning and Distance Education. This usually takes place in January. And uh, this uh, conference has also other sections uh, besides learning and distance education that is connected with business administration or management, cultural issues, whatever. And the main conference for us that uh, is held by ISMA, this is International Scientific Conference Informational Technologies and Management. Take place every April. You are welcome to participate in that because we publish the articles as the result of this conference. And we have many international participants coming physically or participating, for example, in Zoom, if they are not interested in physical presence here. There are also some contents that are meant um, for students, uh, like ISMA Antelect, or we have international mathematical competition kangaroo. This is international, and actually this refers to school. And we have uh, also the annual competition ISMA Invites Talents, where we give an opportunity for talented students to sing, dance, or perform. And then as the result of that, we have uh, annual concert ISMA festival that is uh, held also by ISMA with the help of partners and sponsors um, and uh, is supported also by, let's say, local government. Um, ISMA Student Council, this is an organization that is voluntary, our students form it, and uh, they are trying to support each other, they support the fan students' interests, they can also improve and influence the study process, because we are in close contact, and actually there are several sectors that students uh, are responsible for. It's not only the academic process, but this is sports, for example, or culture, or the sector, LSA sector, this is the sector that is responsible for relation between student associations in educational establishments. So this is something that we pursue. This is something that uh, we offer. Uh, when we talk about uh, our university is an international higher educational establishment, then we can say that in 2017, we had the greatest percentage of international students among private universities or edu higher educational establishments in Latvia. Uh, at the moment, we have 80% of students who are international coming from different countries. This uh, could be Ukraine, this could be Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, um, India, Afghanistan, uh, many, many other countries. Um, then we also appeared in top 10 of multi-rank ranking, and we are quite proud of that because we are small. We, we are a small university, private university. We do not have any financing or funds coming from the government. So it makes us proud because we have proved this quality and this uh, during the years we function. And actually we were the first branch, as I've already mentioned, to uh, have an officially registered accredited branch outside of our country. Um, as to international projects, by 2023 we have applied and also won more than 50 international projects, not only mobility projects, but also other projects related to science, related to different developments. So we are quite modern, we are quite flexible, we have a high quality technical facility, we have qualified staff, our staff is quite young. We have, uh, and we are trying to imply uh, new ways of communication between students and teaching staff. Um, we provide staff trainings in Latvian and also in English, because we have also international teachers coming and teaching here, also based on Erasmus exchange programs. 
And uh, actually, we have uh, the education quality control system that should be established by every university. And uh, we are successfully functioning for almost already 30 years. Uh, talking about our experience and my uh, experience in, in different projects, we can say that we can divide uh, our work into two periods. Uh, this is a pre-Erasmus history and this is Erasmus history. So before Erasmus, before we started applying Erasmus and working with Erasmus programs, we were participating in European Union tempus uh, programs and uh, projects. And we also participated in different national projects and uh, uh, proposals that covered some kind of issues that were related to that time. This could be completely different. This could be something that relates to um, relationship between the university and the employer, the labor market. This is something that refers to student self-government because we have a good example of student association here and we can render these experience to other universities. And as you see, we work with uh, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, different countries. Then, of course, we have participated in lifelong learning programs because this is one of the priority of the European Union and still remains one when you can have your education or training uh, throughout your life cycle and you can actually train for another profession if you feel that your profession is not anymore in demand on the labor market. And of course, the Leonardo da Vinci programs that actually were focusing on vocational process and also on disabled citizens. And actually, participation in such programs and such projects allowed us to improve our, uh, to improve our infrastructure. Let's say our infrastructure of the university is also meant for disabled people because uh, this is also something as a must nowadays that you should uh, you should provide all the possibilities for disabled people to participate in all the processes, including the educational process. So uh, that's uh, that's all I wanted to share about my university. If you feel interested, you can then contact us and uh, get more information, or maybe your children would like to participate in some programs, exchange programs or study in our university, you are welcome. Uh, the information could be found on our web page. So I will turn more to um, opportunities, possibilities and programs. Uh, on this slide, you see um, some projects that are related to science. Uh, actually, we had very good uh, professors who were working in very narrow scientific directions like uh, nanotechnologies or uh, inventing some new materials or whatever is related to mechanical, like electromagnetic projects, whatever. Uh, we also had some projects that were meant for women entrepreneurs. We were creating a platform where women entrepreneurs from different countries can communicate, can uh, exchange experience, can find uh, customers actually. And uh, this was uh, a great success for our university. So when we talk about present possibilities uh, of mobility, of internationalization, of participating in different kinds of research, in getting this result of the research to somewhere in the form of a product, in the form of a uh, participation in a conference in the form of an article. We need to start actually with a policy uh, because of course we perfectly understand that every country has its own policy that is related to education. As soon as we are talking about international cooperation, we need to take in mind the policy that refers to the European Union. At the moment, the context of the policy is creation of the European education area. This is not only the area that covers the countries of the European Union, but this is the area that spreads also to other countries, if not physically, but then uh, through cooperation, through the experience that we exchange, that we share, through the experience that uh, people take from us. 
So actually, this is a strategy that is aiming um, to using the full potential of education and also the culture. And that would lead to job creation, economic growth, and also improved social cohesion. Because still we understand that socially the society is very different. And uh, actually the, um, the focus or the emphasis is on experiencing European identity and experiencing it in its diversity. Because Europeans are very diverse, they are very different, and actually this is a big, big thing that we can use for development of the educational area. Uh, European Commission has developed the Digital Educational Action Plan that uh, works with the period starting from 2021 and uh, till 2027. This is the current planning period. And actually, this shows the vision of the European Union that they want to reach high quality education in Europe, inclusive and accessible digital education. Uh, high quality, this is clear. Inclusive means that everyone should have equal opportunities and equal access to the education. Why it is digital? Of course, the COVID pandemic changed uh, the picture a lot. And uh, now also in Latvian legislation, we have a point that says that um, distance education could be a part of the educational process. And this means that we need to use digital technologies and create some uh, tools or some materials that students can use for the educational process. Uh, when we are talking about this new policy or we are talking about the context that is changing, so of course the European Union was developing this policy for quite a long period of time. It was published in 2020 and all the efforts, all the projects, everything that's going on at the moment is uh, serving this idea through different dimensions, through different ideas, make a shift and reach some outcomes that would make this uh, area smooth, uh, equal in opportunities, equal in access, and also equal in their content. So it's not only about the education itself, it's also about training, and it's not only about students, it's also about school children, it is about the staff working in different educational establishments, and this is also about non-academic staff that supports uh, different uh, processes and different educational uh, projects. When we are talking about uh, dimensions and we are talking about things that actually influence what is happening at the moment, we should think about also priorities and they are reflected in every step of uh, educational process. First of all, this is quality. Of course, every standard has its own system. Educational system has educational standards as uh, refers to quality. And quality is not only following the standards that are established, but also making the process more up to date, more up to demands of the society, and more up to demands of the future. And this is definitely related to future skills. Because nowadays we understand that the skills that are demanded from students or pupils are a bit different. That is why there is a shift in educational in European educational systems from the classical academic educational system to the system that is based on skills. And in our country, as an example, we are moving towards this system and uh, it starts already from the first grade at school. Uh, it is reflected in the change of subjects that uh, pupils would be studying. It is reflected in the hours devoted to each subject. And it is reflected also in the system of uh, evaluation. For example, uh, the pupils of the ninth grade uh, so that uh, has finalized the grade in, uh, in May, uh, when they were studying throughout the year, they did not have semester evaluation. They had only the evaluation in the end of the year. So 
This is not typical for us, but this is something that we will face in the future, that our pupils at school, they will not have marks, final marks, uh, in half a year, only two months or three months, they will have uh, they will have final marks uh, only in May when they finish finalize the grade. Uh, the second uh, direction, this is inclusion and gender. This is equality. Uh, we understand that gender issues uh, could be sensitive sometimes still, but uh, it is about equal opportunities for men and women, for male and female. Because still in Europe, females uh, have lower salary, for example, having the same uh, jobs as men, or they are refused some jobs because they are females or other reasons. Inclusion, this means that people who do not belong to some uh, social groups, they have less opportunities. So people who are disabled or people who are coming from um, the families where that are not full of families with a lot of children as if they have less opportunities. So inclusion and equality, equality means that all people should have the same access to education. The third main priority is going green and going digital. And this, uh, this is transitions because it's not possible to become green 100%. What does it mean green for us? It means that all the papers are exchanged in a digital form and an electronic form. We do not print a lot of papers. We think about the future. We think about the nature. We are trying to preserve it and not to make any harm for them. And all the technologies that we are trying to use nowadays, they are meant for so-called green world, green society. Uh, talking about Erasmus, you will, you can find actually on the net also information that Erasmus will be or green Erasmus, meaning that we need to use less paper and uh, where possible to have it in a digital form or electronic. Moreover, nowadays we are talking about blue Erasmus, maybe this is new for you. Blue Erasmus, these are the projects and possibilities that are meant for developing of technologies, innovative products, something that can help make the world, the society, blue, like more clean, like we can see the blue sky because there are no transmissions uh, or we can have a clear, a more clean um, uh, air or water. This is also connected with ecology. This is connected with being green, but this is already a next step in development. Uh, the fourth uh, perspective is uh, teachers and trainers. As the society is changing, we are talking also sometimes about possibilities of the fourth industrial revolution that would lead to losing some jobs, losing some professions, but at the same time, new jobs and professions would appear. And now we are talking about the fact that the job of teachers and trainers would change because of technologies, because of going digital, because of uh, uh, changing the structure of the educational process. And in this case, of course, we need to think about how to teach teachers and trainers, how to educate them, how to make them up to the demands of the society and how to make them modern, how to make them use these technologies and being open to those technologies. Of course, this would concern higher education. But again, uh, when we are talking about the higher educational system or process, it depends also on school education, what actually students receive in school, what kind of subjects, what kind of skills, so that in higher education they can develop that. And of course, this is connected with the geopolitical things. We are not uh, supposed to talk about this um, in this training because Generally, it has influence on all spheres of life, but um, concerning the educational process in the long run, in the long term perspective, it definitely will have the impact. And that is why we need to be open to changes. When we are talking about new possibilities for people, new possibilities for different educational establishments, we come to such a program as Erasmus+. Plus. Uh, 
I believe that you have heard about those programs. Maybe you have participated in them. Maybe you, at this moment of time, you do not know what kind of opportunities are open to you personally or to the establishments where you work. Uh, as uh, most probably you know or you guess, the Rasmus programs, uh, they are developed for a certain period of time. Now we are in the period start, that started in 2021 and would be finalized in 2027. Each of the, those periods have um, budgets, objectives, and also priorities that should be followed, but also opens vast opportunities for everyone who wants to participate and wants to be a part of that. When we are talking about the, the current period, it is a bit different from what was before because um, when we are talking about different programs, even the source of financing of those programs changed. So concerning uh, general objectives to general things. So the main objective here is to support uh, people who are in education, in professional and personal development, people of all ages and help them in education, training, youth and sports in Europe and also beyond. So I'm talking about projects and things that are available not only for people living in the European Union, but also outside of that. If we are looking at the participating countries, then there are 33 program countries. Program countries, these are European Union countries and some that belong, let's say, to Europe, but they are not yet or are not interested in joining the European Union. Uh, but they are called program countries. All other countries, they are called partner countries. And uh, in this case, we are talking about the international activities that are open to the rest of the world. If we will look at partner countries, literally every country from every continent can participate in this project, but having a partner in program countries. Let's say you want to make a project that uh, could be financed from the European Union funds, you need to find the European partner. So a, a university, a school, a kindergarten, a, school, a sports school somewhere in Europe. There are three main actions, mobility, cooperations, and policy development. Mobility is about mobility of uh, school children, students, um, doctoral students, and staff of different educational establishments. Cooperation is something above, like uh, creation of uh, common study programs, like uh, master programs, for example. Policy development, this is something of a higher level that can influence actually the policy, educational policy in your country, in your region, in your university, in group of universities, etc. Uh, the way the programs are implemented, they uh, have indirect and direct implementation. Indirect implementation, this is regulated by national agency. In our country, this is Latvian national agency in Ukraine. There is uh, also national agency, Ukrainian national agency. I will show you the, the source later and we will see how it is possible to find information. Uh, the direct um, implementation is uh, performed by European Commission on its structures. So actually this is EIC structure and um, this is about education and culture. And uh, EACEA, this is European Education and Culture Executive Agency. These are the structures that are monitoring, that are managing the projects at the higher level. Mobility projects, they are managed or implemented by national agencies. Other projects, they are with the direct implementation and uh, managed from Brussels, let's say from uh, the European Union. Talking about the budget, as you see, the budget is huge and it is meant for 10 million participants. And it is not only like uh, people, it meant for also organizations, so opportunities are vast. And the total budget of more than 28 billion uh, euro is divided in generally two parts. 
70% of the, of the budget is meant for mobility projects. So again, we understand that a lot of money are spent on staff, students, uh, school children to move, to gain experience, to share their experience. And 30% of the budget goes for cooperation projects and policy development projects. So actually, this gives us uh, an idea that somehow we can participate in these mobility projects. Uh, again, for Erasmus+, Plus, we have uh, three horizontal priorities, inclusive, digital, and green. And this is something that is always in Erasmus. Green becoming more green every year or every period. This is logical, like uh, doing everything online. And in this case, European Union is developing different tools that are used by universities that make the process of document exchange, information exchange faster, and does not demand the paperwork. Digital is about developing implementation and cooperation of different, not only programs, but for example, study cycles or study possibilities, training possibilities, not only for students, but also for staff members. And inclusive, again, people from different backgrounds, from different social groups with different abilities, should have same possibilities. So um, when we are talking about inclusion and diversity, it's not only like you need to involve people from different groups, but you need to provide them access and also you should be fair about choosing who can participate. It doesn't mean that only disabled people should participate in those programs. No, you should divide it in the look at the number of people who are disabled and uh, actually their possibility to, to participate. Because again, we understand that not everyone desires to participate, but at least spread information, share information is also important. Digital transformation. So this is not only some digital things like a program that you develop or the tool that you invest in or in, or in school. This is also development of digital skills because very often we have a tool, but we do not know how to use it. And of course, this refers not only to education itself, but also climate change, clean energy. This refers to artificial intelligence, that we know is already uh, incorporated in study process, robotics, data analysis, uh, arts, design, whatever. Uh, for example, there is, and we all know, everyone who works in education knows the problem with artificial intelligence, chat, chat GPT, whatever. And actually, uh, it is quite difficult to understand where students sometimes use artificial intelligence. Uh, for our students in our school and also in our university, we have um, introduced one rule that is based on recommendation from educational um, ministry that students can use chat GPT or artificial intelligence for writing their essays or writing their diplomas, but they need to give the reference, the initial reference, and then this usually makes a problem. So actually we, as if trying to limit the use of artificial intelligence by our students. But again, this is a problem that everyone faces and uh, of course will face also in the future. Uh, participation in democratic life is also something that Europe tries to introduce in every project. And this is actually addressing the trends that are widely spread in Europe and uh, making people more aware of what happens in, in Europe, in democratic life, what uh, is about European matters, like what is important for Europe, what they are trying to introduce, what they are trying to, to reach. Environmental sustainability, this is, again, green practices. This is thinking about the resources for the future generations. And this is keeping the environment uh, clean. And um, again, there are a lot of projects that are related to science that um, target development of innovative product or technology or the way of making something that would help to sustain the environment. So this is again one of the uh, objectives. This is one of the priorities. 
what are the, the actions that are supported and what are the actions that actually we can use? Mobility. Mobility is clear. When we are talking about the mobility of higher education students and staff, these are simple Erasmus Plus learners mobility projects that assume um, studying for students studying in European um, universities or higher educational establishments for a semester of one year. Uh, for staff, usually the mobility is one week, could be prolonged to, for a longer time, and this is, of course, granted uh, by the European Union funds. So you have a grant that covers your expenses. There is also mobility for vocational and educational uh, trainings and learners and also the staff. Usually these are colleges, some kind of professional colleges. There is also mobility of school pupils and staff, school pupils starting from 14 years of age and also school teachers. When you come to European schools, you will learn how they work, the methods that they use, maybe some innovative things. There is also mobility of adult education learners as staff, uh, people who are involved in adult education. And uh, this is not only, let's say, higher education, this is connected with um, gaining new profession when you are already adult. And language learning opportunities, usually these are so-called summer schools when you can come, for example, to Latvia and study Latvian for two months. This is also something that shows the culture of the country and is usually very interesting for, for young, uh, young people. Cooperation. So cooperation is um, a bit more complex and usually when we talk from the point of view of the European Commission, they see mobility projects as the first step in development some cooperation for the future. Then when they see that you are successfully realizing mobility projects, they, they want to see that you cooperate also in other spheres. So uh, these could be small scale partnerships like partnerships between two universities, small universities or several universities. These could be also partnerships for excellences and this is connected with the idea of the European universities. These could be joint master degrees and also related to um, a higher priority, let's say, creation of European universities. What is the idea of this European university? Uh, European Union, through different projects and financing different partnerships, is trying to reach um, a situation where different European universities unite in a certain partnership and provide equal programs for different students. Let's say there are six or seven universities with similar programs, with uh, similar um, processes. And in this case, the student that enters the university can spend one semester, for example, in Riga in the university. The second semester, he can sp spend some, somewhere in Italy in the same program. The third semester, he can spend somewhere in Sweden in the same program. The idea here is to have uh, the system on a module basis. Like the student can, uh, the student needs to pass the exams for a certain number of credit points. But the subjects are not connected with the year of study. The subjects are uh, like you can random, randomly you, uh, choose the subjects and study them in different universities. The main thing is that you need to pass the exam and collect a certain number of uh, credit points. This is very interesting and uh, this is very good for young people and from the point of view of European Union, this gives very good opportunities to live in different countries, to experience uh, culture, um, educational systems, maybe also work sometimes in, in these systems in these countries and have this vast experience. Of course, there are partnerships for innovation, and this is about creation of a new product, a technology, a service that could be spread not only across the European Union, but also in other countries. Uh, of course, online platforms, tools for virtual cooperation, and exactly this became very actual during the COVID pandemic. Concerning policy development, as you can see, there are some partnerships and some projects that are meant for development of sectoral policies and education and training, uh, some policies that are meant for quality. 
Uh, some uh, that are meant for transparency uh, could be recognition of skills, and this refers to recognition of professional diplomas, let's say, when you do not need to confirm your diploma when you move to another European country, for example. Then, of course, there could be a dialogue between um, and cooperation also between stakeholders like the state organization, municipality, and higher educational establishment that proposes some changes in the policy of education. Many other programs um, connected with uh, different instruments, different projects that are more serious and involve also partners from municipalities, from uh, governmental structures, etc. Uh, genre actions. This is something that is very real, very interesting, and very popular. Uh, Jean Monnet could be in the field of higher education and also in other fields of education and training. Why this is interesting? To apply for Jean Monnet actions, you can do it yourself. Any educational establishment can do it. But again, you need to find a European partner. And submission of these projects, uh, you know that in some projects, European partner must submit the project. For Jean Monnet, there is no such a condition. Any university, any uh, educational establishment can um, submit that. And actually, Jean Monnet is meant for direct exchange of experience. A uh, very popular direction was, uh, let's say, regional policy in the European Union. And uh, let's say our partners in Ukraine were submitting the projects where uh, they reflected the way they want to gain these experience from us, how we work on the regional level, what does it mean, how they can implement that on the level of educational establishment or further on municipal level and so on. So Jean Manet is very easy, very easy to write, very easy to submit and could be very interesting even for individual um, teachers, individual professors. For youth, it's the same. You see that there are mobility, cooperation, and policy development projects. Again, the sense and the essence is the same. Only like uh, the age group is different or um, belonging to the educational establishment or establishment in general. And of course, there are policy development that are more uh, related to, to young children, let's say, or to other stakeholders that refer to the policy, to the education and training exactly uh, for young people. Um, and uh, also for sports. So it's not only about the traditional and academic education, it's also about sports, mobility of sports staffs, also cooperation that is um, um, meant for sports events, for example, not for profit sports events. But again, to organize such an event, you need to spend money. So that is why the European um, community or the European Union is thinking about granting such an activity. And also policy development, because sports is also something that is associated with physical activity. This is something that contributes to health of the nation. This is something that can uh, use inclusiveness, like include people from different from different social groups, etc. And this is, of course, something that is supported, and of course, can lead to policy changes in different countries in in, in different regions. When we are talking about the differences, uh, most probably uh, this is a detail that is technical. Let's say. Uh, there were changes introduced starting from 2021, and we can say that the management of projects changed. The thing that I have explained to you uh, before, that, that there is uh, there are projects that are managed uh, locally, like on a national basis by national agencies, and projects that are managed by European structures. So uh, when we are talking about partnerships, we, we talk about partnerships for cooperation or for innovation or for excellence, then in this case, we can talk not only about the, the academic um, educational process, but also vocational process, vocational education, and we talk about joint master degrees. Uh, joint master degrees, the problem here is that Developing the programs themselves 
thinking about how to fill them in, thinking about the professors and the staff because there are strict demands towards it. And they are managed directly from the, from the European Union, from the European Commission structures. And the um, inspection of the projects is, is more strict. So we can say that the current period, it is more related to future objectives of the European Union. It involves more partners that are outside of the European Union. It has more money meant for, for the project, but it is more uh, strictly managed. So again, we need to be responsible for what we are doing. And uh, the continuum that the European Union is trying to reach through these projects. So if we start with mobility projects and we are going to some policy changing projects. So this is cooperation. Just we start with cooperating with exchange of students, exchange of staff, we exchange experiences, we exchange what we what we can do, our skills, whatever. Then we need to think about innovation what we can introduce to our processes, to our uh, work that would make us more innovative, that would make the quality of the process better or higher. And then the next step is excellence. Excellence, it's not only the highest quality of the, of the process or education, this is also reaching something that is similar like in European universities. And the last, uh, objective for the last point, this is policy, changing of the policy. So uh, the European Union is not trying to change its policy, but it wants to influence policies, let's say, in the field of education in other countries. And this could be done starting with mobilities, with changing the experience, acquiring new skills, and step by step, this would lead to higher legal demands. Uh, when we are talking about cooperation in education, and especially in higher education, there are some, of course, key goals, and uh, these refer also to what we do every day and uh, the way we cooperate. So this is uh, connected with future skills, and future skills definitely would be connected with digitalization, with artificial intelligence, with new technologies, new ways of teaching, new types of students, because of course the student as a personality also changes. And in this case, at the moment, there are great mismatches between the future skills and what we know and can do at the moment. So the European Union wants to um, minimize these mismatches and promote excellence in skills that we develop. So high quality skills that are related to future skills. Then this is building inclusive and connected higher education systems so that a person studying here can go to another country, not obligatory European Union country and study there uh, with acceptance of everything that was studied uh, before or the results that are also acknowledged. Then uh, ensuring that higher education institutions contribute to innovation. And this is again incorporation of different digital solutions in the system of education. It's not only again the system that you use for distance uh, learning, for distance education, for example. This is everything that the company is a student in the process of education. And of course, these innovations are vital for, for development of, of, of education and uh, reaching excellence. And of course, supporting effective and efficient higher education systems. So this is about using resources. This is about making right decisions in the right time. This is being up to date. And this is also developing for the future to meet future needs and to correspond to, uh, to future skills. What are the main opportunities that you can have, we can have, and something that most probably you can use also for your everyday development? We perfectly know that uh, staff in different educational establishments has demands towards development and getting new skills and getting new information. So uh, we are aware that 
the demands of, of your educational policy or educational uh, legislation are as follows, that you need to train periodically, you need to write articles, you need to participate in different projects to be employed in the educational system. The same refers to, to us, because we have also our obligations that we need to, to fill in. So uh, there are some projects that can help us do that. So now you are participating in the training that uh, will provide you with a certificate that will help you to develop in your profession. But to uh, participate in opportunities that are meant for your educational establishment, you can use uh, the link that you show in uh, that is shown on, on the slide. This is a working link. Uh, afterwards, after the training, you will receive this presentation and you can go to this link and check the information available. So these are Erasmus programs that are meant also for Ukrainian educational establishment. And as you can see, there are the sections, uh, different sections. The first section, higher education. So if you go in, you will find all the projects that your uh, university or institute or whatever can participate in. And what are the opportunities in this uh, respect? Again, uh, to realize these projects, you need to have European partners. So many, um, many uh, universities, they are searching for partners or they already have partners. Let's say uh, our university is working with Ukraine already a long period of time. We have many partners uh, in, in Ukraine as universities, but we are open to new partners. We are open to new cooperation because this is our strategy. We want to become more and more international. So higher education is clear. You go inside, you see what's possible. You see at the mobility projects. Maybe your university already has a mobility project and you want to participate in that, or you want to apply for such a, for such a project. Then school education. Again, you can see what is possible to do in schools. In our private school, we also have some projects running some of these projects are meant uh, for exchange of students, school students and stuff. Some other projects are meant uh, for other purposes. Like we have a project that is more creative, but also um, refers to Green Erasmus, how um, students can use the garbage for, for different purposes. Like our uh, school students, they create different projects, creative projects using the garbage. So. This is also something that schools can participate in. And this is also creativity that people can use. Adult education, everything that is connected with the training of adults, uh, providing them second higher education or training so that they can change their profession. Vocational education or training, everything that is connected with skills, professions, colleges. Jeanne projects, something that I have just explained. Uh, higher education reforms expert team. These are the teams that can help you to, or projects that can help you to introduce something that would lead to reforms in the educational system in higher education. So there are some projects that are made for youth, young children, young people. Uh, sports, the projects that are related to sports, school, sports organization. Uh, this is the section that is about Erasmus Plus during the war in, the, in Ukraine. Why? Because we perfectly know that there are limitations. Um, students from Ukraine, they come and study. For example, in our university, we had six students during the previous uh, semester and uh, some students are coming also in September. Um, uh, if you mean, uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm just distracted by the question. Uh, um, what do you mean by uh, by your question? Uh, this uh, presentation would be available to you. If you need the translation of that, then you can use automatic translation on Google Translate. And all of these um, links, they would be accessible also in the presentation that you would receive later. Uh, so about the limitations, uh, now at the, the given point of time, only women or girls can come study in, in European universities. We are not allowed 
who uh, receive boys or men who are in age from 18 till 60. And this is the demand uh, from the Ukrainian side, and this is the demand of the Latvian educational ministry. Unfortunately, we all know the situation. We hope that the situation will change. And uh, of course, there are some limitations. The process is not easy, but still the students are coming. Uh, if we are talking about inclusive digital and green, this is uh, just description of priorities and the programs that uh, are available to, to people in your country. So what I advise you to do, if you are interested in mobility, in coming and um, getting experience from European educational establishments, in working maybe for a short period of time in some of the higher education establishments in Europe, if your university or your education establishment does not have such a program, you can initiate it. You can suggest that your university can participate in, in such programs. So again, this link would be available to you in the presentation. You can go in and you will see the information that I have on, on, on the slide. So uh, let's move on. Um, another opportunity that you can use, these are Latvian state scholarships. Latvian state scholarships are provided by uh, Latvian budget. So the previous programs, they are financed by European Union funds with the traction uh, of some external funds. Latvian state scholarships, they are provided by Latvian budget. So uh, this is again the working link. You will receive the presentation, you can go in. This is the screenshot from the, from the page. Uh, at the moment, as I know, the participation or the application process is closed. So you need just to follow uh, the information when this would be open. So actually, this is a program or this is the project or this is the application process that even individuals can participate in. And here you can see that there are scholarships for studies, also for studies for staff of the educational establishments that you can come to European Union educational establishment. You can study here and you can be trained here, you can receive new experience here, and you can also work here for a short period of time. And these scholarships uh, usually cover all the expenses that are associated with traveling, staying here. Um, I would say that it will not cover all your expenses, but the biggest part. Uh, then there are also summer schools. Uh, as an individual, you can apply for participation in the summer school. Summer schools are devoted to different topics. This could be study of Latvian language, or this could be culture of the Baltic states, or these could be um, differences in cultures between you know, Latvian and Estonian uh, people. This could be interesting. This helps to establish new contacts. And usually you receive grants for this or scholarships for this. Uh, when you would come, uh, come in, you will, I will try just, uh, to, to use it and to show you that when you come in, you see the uh, applicants, the, the countries that are valid for application. And uh, as you see, Ukraine is one of the countries that is eligible. So people from these countries can make an application, uh, fill, uh, fill in all the necessary papers and wait for the response. Uh, when you would uh, come in and find information, like if we will go to scholarships, then there are application conditions. And as you can see, uh, the procedure would be opened during a certain period of time. There is an online application form and uh, the list of documents or copies of documents that you need to provide. Then somewhere on this web page, you can also find the list of um, all the 
um, universities and all the educational establishments that actually suggest uh, this opportunity. We had one student that was coming to, to us, uh, to our university uh, through this program. I advise you to use that because this is actually uh, very good for, for your development. Again, just follow the information when the application process uh, will start, just to uh, to follow all the uh, deadlines, because it takes usually two months. Um, it's open uh, during two months. Um, summer schools or scholarships for studies is also a way how you can actually work in science or um, do something in, in, in scientific research. Because if you are a PhD student, then you can obtain the scholarship, you can come to the European University and uh, perform some scientific experiences here, or you can gain some uh, maybe knowledge that is re related to your scientific interests. So this is very good. I advise everyone to, to just get information, find information about this. Another opportunity that is closed at the moment, if I'm not mistaken, but again, you need just to follow the information. This is a Latvian-Ukrainian cooperation program. And uh, this uh, program is supported by Latvian um, science, uh, science Ministry and Science Council. Uh, here you see information in Latvian because uh, on the moment when I was making the screenshot, not all information was translated in English. But again, if we would uh, come to use the link and come to this um, site again, we do not have here all the information in English if we will switch uh, to, to languages, but the essence, I will explain the essence. So there is a program that is meant for um, science and uh, scientific developments. This is supported from the Ukrainian side by the Ministry of Education and Science of Ukraine. From our side, from Latvian side, it is uh, supported by also uh, Education and Science Ministry. There are some rules that were accepted back in 2015. And uh, the essence of this uh, program is that there are some priorities uh, in which you can develop a common program, a common program and common project between the Ukrainian um, establishment, scientific establishment, institute or university and European partner. The project is written in two languages and uh, is submitted in two places in Ukrainian, and it is submitted in the ministry, uh, Ukrainian Ministry of Science and Education. The same project is translated into Latvian and is also submitted here in the Ministry of Education and Science. These uh, projects can have inside of them a part where you can organize a common conference, when you can organize a certain common, um, doesn't matter where in, in European side or Ukrainian side, common experiments that you have. Uh, these can have developments uh, of innovative ideas, products and services. We also had experience in submitting these projects, but we didn't win. Uh, our partners in uh, Ukraine, in one of the Ukrainian Universities has developed a project that was uh, devoted to social and economic factors uh, in migration processes. Unfortunately, this is not a kind of priority that uh, our ministries of science and education want to, to see. The priorities, as I mentioned before, inclusion, digitalization, innovation, being green, being blue, uh, development of new materials, and development, everything that can help to create new medical um, stuff, pharmaceutical stuff, and also biotechnologies. Then something that is uh, referred to new energy sources and also agricultural sector. Of course, there are also some uh, priorities that refer to socioeconomic issues and aspects 
but it's very difficult to obtain uh, grants and uh, financing for these kind of projects. Again, this is a very good opportunity for scientists, for young scientists, for uh, professors to participate in some scientific um, conferences, uh, programs to develop technologies, to develop innovation, and also make it international. So when writing such a pro project, you need to prove that the results could be widely used, not only in your country, but also let's say in the European Union. So again, uh, sorry, uh, this is something that you can use for yourself. This is something that you can use for your uh, establishment where you work. Just uh, use this link and follow the information uh, when it is refreshing. Another uh, source that I think could be of uh, interest to you, this is the European Higher Educational Area uh, web page. And this is again something that uh, you can access and you can use. Um, I have not found fresh information about different projects here, but some general information that you can use, you can read, or you can maybe some find some something that is related to your job or your profession. So what we are interested in that actually, as I've mentioned before, European Commission has developed some priorities and this should lead to the European educational area. So uh, we are talking about Bologna process and we are talking about its results and what is the follow-up and what, what is happening actually in this uh, respect. So we can find different topics here, different ideas, uh, different information in mobility, lifelong uh, learning. Uh, there are different events that are taking place. Um, maybe you can be interested in that. So I found this web page very useful for those who work with projects or who are searching for a um, um, aspect or the sphere where the project could be created and developed. And this could be also your interest that um, you use in your uh, professional life. So again, one of the sources that you can use for yourself. Uh, so far, this is everything uh, about the opportunities and about the possibilities that everyone has. Just in short, I would like to highlight uh, what it means to be involved in such a project. You can be involved as an individual if you participate in Jean Manet project or um, as an individual participating in mobility, but in general, the project starts with preparation of the application and a lot of people are involved in that. And usually the realization of the project means that a lot of structures participate. So for us, um, this is the international relations department where we take care about visas or invitations. We uh, think about residence permit if necessary. For example, if a student is coming on mobility, um, for Ukrainian students, you know, or citizens 90 days within a year, you can stay without the visa. But if a student comes for a semester, and usually it is five months, uh, he or she needs to obtain the visa. So international relations department helps. Project department, which I'm having, we are making all the documents, we are preparing applications, we are following, submitting all the reports, everything. Study department makes the curriculum not only for students, but also for academic staff. So if you come here for a week and you are interested in teaching one of the subjects for one day, for example, then we need to um, discuss it and to introduce it in our curriculum. Financial department is, uh, in, um, is participating on the money transfers, is uh, responsible for this. Uh, what is interesting, many of the projects and especially mobility projects, um, they are managed by financial departments of universities, but the money are not coming from the accounts of the university. We have a special structure it is called the state cash register. We have accounts there and the money coming from there. So actually, universities do not have access to this money. 
the money could be used only for the purposes of mobility, nothing else. And they do not, this money are not transferred to accounts of the universities, only to state uh, organization. Uh, administration, of course, because the administration is checking all the documents, uh, performing the control over the process, and also the self, uh, student self-government, because they help us a lot with integrating students into the process and also helping with the uh, teachers uh, just to show around, to help, to get oriented in, in social matters, maybe to go sightseeing or something of the kind. So a lot of structures, a lot of people would be also connected with the realization of the product. Uh, we also face some problems, and this is not only in mobility projects, but also in other projects, like academic staff doesn't want to participate because maybe the linguistic skills are not that good. To participate in any international project, um, you should have knowledge of English or linguistic skills at the B2 level, uh, according to the European system. Um, if we are talking about uh, technical stuff, usually they never participate. Uh, again, it's very difficult to have the guest staff from different companies because uh, they are not used to teaching, they are not used to sharing the experience this way. And uh, the majority of people who participate in project, they are female from our experience, 90%. Uh, then uh, when people participate in long-term mobility, it's difficult to find a replacement, especially for a small university like ours. And also uh, there is lack of motivation uh, in people who, who want to participate because sometimes you have the desire and you want to participate or you have some scientific interest, but then all these things that are related to documents, to physical movement to uh, living in, in, in a different country, this uh, sometimes uh, reduces the motivation to participate in this, uh, in this project. Um, then sometimes it's still cultural gaps or individual problems that do not let people to participate or travel a lot. There are some problems, could be some problems with accommodation, with timing, there are some general inconveniences that people don't want to face. But what we are trying to do, we are trying to motivate our partners to be more active, uh, to share experience, to gain experience, to come here at least, to see how uh, the life happens here, what we do in our processes and how this could be interested. Uh, then uh, another thing that it, I found complicated and complex for, for different projects is that the process itself become more complex due to many tools that are introduced. These are the tools that are meant for different uh, reasons, for, the, for different purposes. Like uh, as an example, there is so-called OLS test or language support. We need to use a certain system that grants a possibility to students to check the level of English, for example, and uh, also for staff members. And during the mobility, they have a possibility to use the resources to increase the uh, language knowledge. This is free of charge, but this is one tool. Another tool, another system is used for project management. Another system, another tool is used for making documents, exchanging of uh, uh, contracts, agreements, etc. Another tool is used for students, like student mobility cards, student information is reflected in this system. Then the registration of all the results of, of the project, all the reports, all the papers that are necessary to fill in and to provide. So this is, again, something that is limited. Uh, sometimes there could be delays in payments, and uh, this is something that we need to, to understand, especially with Ukraine at the moment, because all the payments that are going to Ukraine, Ukrainian bank accounts, they are checked. And recently we have um, we had a situation when one of the staff members from our partner university in Ukraine came here. We have transferred the money one week before the mobility. And uh, the money came to the bank account in two weeks after the day uh, of transfer. So we should be ready for that. And this is something that happens. 
Um, what is interesting here that there are some things that we need to know and we need to follow um, when we develop a project. So this information is universal and this is valid for any project that is related uh, to the European Union or to something that you do with European partners. When you design a project or you develop a project, what you need to think, whether it is scientific or it is mobility or it is cooperation, whatever, these are some rules that come from our experience of working with projects. So first of all, you need to think and reflect the strategy of your country in the field of the project. Um, for, for us, let's say Latvia is the part of the European Union, we look at the strategy of the Union itself, and then we look at the strategy of our country. We see some strategic priorities and we find how this is related to the field of the project we would like to apply. Then we need to look and reflect the strategy of the higher education establishment or institution or scientific uh, structure, the current strategy and the long-term strategy, because again, there could be changes that are related to, to strategical issues. Then we need to reflect the objectives of or strategic objectives, one or several, depending on the field of the project and what we want to reflect. Uh, of course, we need to reflect benefits for participants, how people, organizations participating in the project will benefit from that. Then we need to reflect long-term effort. This is a must in every project because what we do now should have impact also in the future. So long-term effect of, of the project on things on uh, establishment, on the policy, on people involved, on, on life in general, whatever. Then we need to give a detailed description of target groups and results for each target group. And this is also as if not difficult, but then again, speaking, for example, about mobility projects, we need to think about students, academic staff, non-academic staff, their parents, uh, people that um, work in municipal organizations that, um, that can get the result of these mobility projects. How this would influence, for example, the quality of education if our staff members participate in these projects. What students will bring to their own educational establishment in the result of this training for this mobility project? So actually, um, we divide uh, target groups and then for every group, uh, for each group, we give the detailed description of what they gain, what are the results and what would be the long-term effort for them. Sustainability is a must. Sustainability means that the results of the project, whatever the project is, would be felt, would be, will have effect also in their future, not only short term, but also long term. And uh, we need to mention the connection with other projects, uh, the former projects that we're, um, we were participating in or we were connected with, and also future projects if we have some ideas. Because when, for example, we are applying the mobility project with a new partner, we say that. This is the first step in our cooperation. We want to start with mobility. We want to exchange information, experience. And then in the future, we are thinking about other cooperation possibilities like maybe joint master's program, maybe joint um, project in developing uh, you know, innovative tools for educational process, whatever. Then we need to describe the connection with other programs and maybe also the effect that uh, it can have on other products like you are working with some experienced staff and how this staff can also be connected with other programs or other results. And also the impact of results strategically, like how this would contribute to the strategy of your educational establishment or how it could change the strategy of your establishment in the future. So these are some tips that work for everyone, for every project, uh, no matter the, the field, the mobility, the cooperation, the scientific research or scientific articles and conferences. This is very good to use also um, 
when you develop some projects together. So this is all that I wanted to share. Uh, on this slide, you see uh, my personal information, uh, email, and also um, the number for, for contacts. So if you are interested in getting more information, or maybe you are interested in getting information about our universities, so possibilities to cooperate between our universities and your education establishment, you are welcome to send me an email and we will see what we can do together. Uh, if you will have some questions, please, you can also send them to my email and I would be happy to answer them. So um, that's all that I wanted to share. If you have any questions to me at the moment, you are welcome to ask. Thank you for your attention. It took me a bit more than I had planned, but I hope that this information was uh, very good for you and useful. Щиро дякуємо, пані Діана, шановні колеги. Чи є запитання, будь ласка? Запитань немає. Пані Діана казала, що ви можете надіслати на електронну адресу. Цю презентацію, яку ви бачили, ми розійшли всім учасникам. Там будуть контакти пані Діани. Відповідно, ви зможете переглянути ще раз презентацію, сконтуватися з пані Діаною. А також наша лекція буде залита на YouTube. Всім буде розіслане посилання з можливістю додатково ще раз переглянути і вивчити ті питання, які ви не зрозуміли. Пані Діана, щиро дякуємо, щиро дякуємо всім учасникам. Усім гарного навчального року. Успішного і сподіваюся переможного. До побачення. Thank you very much and yes, replying to the command, you can contact me directly by my email in case you have some ideas for future cooperation. So thank you once again, have a good day and hope maybe to see you or contact you in the future again. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.